What's up guys, my name is Alex Rondego, and in this video we're going to be talking about dealing with your counter classes when you're playing heavy in competitive TF2. Now, uh, in the, the background here, the video I've got is uh, a game we just played, or part of a game that we just played on Viaduct. This is with my uh, Steel Team and UGC. And I picked this uh, demo to play back because I think the game and the, the map too, Viaduct, illustrate really well the stuff that I'm about to talk about. Which, by the way, I'm going to be focusing on three classes in this video. The uh, Sniper, the Spy, and the Scout. And I'll do my best to kind of point out when during the demo things happen, when I can point them out. Like, there's stuff with the Sniper that you just saw. I'm not going to point that out just yet. But try to watch the video and listen to what I'm saying at the same time. Because there's a lot of good stuff in this demo that I want you guys to look at. And sure, I make mistakes, but it's not about me playing perfectly in this game. It's about what happens and how you can kind of uh, learn to, to deal with them. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Let's talk about the uh, scout. As long as we're firing at him, we can start talking about him. The scout is uh, interesting because uh, I actually include the scout. Like I said, spy and sniper are pretty obvious threats to the heavy. They're the pick classes, and you're a big, fat, slow heavy. Scout, I think, is also a big threat because he's fast. He can double jump, and the big threat is when he gets right up in your face, and he can just have his way with your entire body with his scatter gun, and it's not fun when that happens. So... That being said, it's tough because there's really not a whole lot of tricks you can use against a scout uh, if he's right up in your face to outplay him besides tracking. It really comes down to pure tracking. So, in that sense, the way you can get an edge over him is, especially on small maps like this where there's a pretty good, you know, uh, there's a lot of sight lines everywhere. The trick I like to stick to with the scout is the earlier that you see him, the earlier that you catch him, the better that your chances of either killing him, or surviving a one-on-one -on -one with him, or even saving a teammate like a medic, or a sniper, or something like that. Because keep in mind, a scout will always try to flank. A scout will never just, unless he's chasing you down when you're already hurt, a scout will never just head on, rush for you, and try to kill you like that. He's always, gonna, Especially on a map like Viaduct, he's going to try to flank around, try to find a weak spot, and try to either pick off you, or more likely, your medic. So it's really a matter of looking around, watching your back, not just for the spy, but for the scout. Because again, the scout's going to love to flank. And the earlier that you see him, the better your chances of dealing with him. That being said, there is one other thing that helps me. I'm not going to call it a trick, because I don't expect you guys to go out and change this on a whim in an effort to get better at fighting scouts. But what helps me a lot is my sensitivity. Um, the way that we generally measure sensitivity in competitive, if you weren't familiar with this, is something called inches per 360. Which is different from in-game sensitivity because you can set your in-game sensitivity, but then you might have a different uh, mouse sensitivity, which is called dots per inch, or DPI. Which, if you've bought a mouse recently, you know that can be in the thousands. It's, they get pretty high. So the way to consolidate all of that is to use inches per 360, and that basically means just how many inches it takes of motion with the mouse it takes for you to move uh, or turn 360 degrees in game. So for me, I play with a very high sensitivity. I play with, I think it's 2.5 or 2.6 inches per 360, which if you're if you're moving your hand around, yeah, it's, it's pretty high. Um, a lot of players, you know, players, it, it comes down to preference. You have your preference. Um, I know a lot of snipers tend, and just other classes tend to use uh, lower sensitivities, like 12, 14, 16 inches per 360, and that's because the lower sensitivity gives you more um, consistency and more precision, while higher sensitivity gives you more um, a better ability to kind of flick around. And like as a heavy, it's good because I can I can flick really quickly, and I can uh, watch my back and flick around, and I can track scouts really well, which is why I like it. So again, I'm not expecting you to change your sensitivity just for that. I'm just saying it's neat to realize that it's something that helps if it's something that you already use. But that scouts. Yeah, there's th I mean, there's not a lot of tricks. Um, if you need to practice your tracking, uh, anything from pubs to lobbies to uh, any, any heavy play will work as long as you practice at it. Uh, next up, I think snipers. Let's talk about some sniper. Um... Sniper is one of the more simple of these three. I think it is the most simple in terms of just learning how to uh, how to deal with him. But if you see a sniper at long range, just stay out of his sight line. Just don't don't talk to him. Make him. He's like he's like the kid that annoys you so much that you just don't even want to talk to him anymore. You just throw him out of your life. You don't care about him. But you do. So you don't want to shoot him. 
But you do want to tell your team that he's there. You do if you see him, you're gonna be, you're gonna tell your friends like, "Hey, this asshole's in the corner. Don't talk to him." Friends, because you do that with your friends, right? But also on the other hand, if you don't see the sniper at long range and you hear your teammates on your comms say, "Oh, there's a sniper on cliff," or "There's a sniper on bridge," or something like that, you have you know, believe them. Don't don't think that they're lying. They're not lying to you. It's it's tempting to like peek out and say, "Oh, is there actually a sniper there?" And then you get headshot. So. Play smart, don't do what I do a lot of the time, which is play stupid. Play smart, believe your team's comms, listen to your team's comms. And that's just one example of how comms are so important to a heavy, but I don't want to get off track here. So avoid sight lines from the sniper at long range. However, however, at medium and close range, even at medium range, your bullets will d mess up the sniper's aim completely. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this already, but if you don't, if you don't play sniper, every bullet, every impact that the sniper takes actually flicks his aim. And it, if you're if you're constantly hitting hitting, bleh, if you're constantly hitting him with bullets like you do from the minigun, his aim is going to be all out of whack from medium or short range. So you'll probably kill him because of his, his 125 health. But if you don't, you're going to mess his aim up enough that the one shot that he has to take is likely going to miss. So I usually engage snipers if I can at medium to short range. Even if they're not focusing me, if they're aiming at a teammate, I'll still do it because I'll distract their aim enough that they're going to miss the teammate, maybe the medic that he's aiming for. Remember, a lot of this stuff is not just protecting yourself or working with your... It's about protecting your teammates. So uh, you got to keep that in mind too when you're working with these uh, classes. Same thing with the scout, same thing with the sniper. My medic just died a second ago, like you saw, and I just saw. I don't know if there's a lot I could do about that. Um, so if you know, if it, <laughs> if your team drops to, or your teammate drops to a sniper, or you drop to a spy. It's not the end of the world. You know, nobody's perfect. We make mistakes. Like I just I died to a spy, but you know what? I don't feel bad because I did what I could. Maybe I made a mistake, sure, but that's part of it. <laughs> Now notice that I've been putting off uh, talking about the spy, because obviously I wanted to milk this video for views and have people rage in the comments like, when's he gonna talk about the spy? That's all I care about. Well, let's see if I can do a trumpet here. <laughs> I'll never do that again. So let's talk about the spy, yeah. Um, the spy is interesting in that... I I think for a lot of new heavies, it's he seems to be really annoying, like the most annoying class to deal with as a new heavy. But when you think about it, Spy is actually probably one of the easier classes. So think about easier classes to deal with, I mean. So think about... I'm talking if you don't play Spy. If you play Spy, you probably already know this, but if you don't play Spy, the Spy has, especially in competitive, has a pretty consistent rhythm that goes along with just the, just the play. So the rhythm, it's kind of like a cycle. It goes like spawn, disguise, cloak, get behind the enemy team, find a spot, find a weakness, decloak and stab, and then die, and then repeat, right? So how I like to practice with the Spire, what, what, I, what I did when I first started playing heavy and competitive was I would take a game or take a lobby. Lobbies are great for this, by the way. A lobby or a game or a scrim or something like that. Whoops, bump the mic. And for an entire game, I would pick one thing to focus on. So say it's the spy, say it's spy awareness that I want to focus on. I take an entire game, and I say, okay, I want to focus on the spy. And you keep the spy, you keep what the spy is up to, where he is, all that, anything like that. You keep it in the front of your mind as the focus for the entire game. And that doesn't mean, like, constantly flicking around, checking your back, actually firing your minigun. What it means is just mentally, so just mentally keeping the spy in the front of your mind as focus. So, with that, what I'm talking about is when the spy dies, whether it's from you or from a, uh, from a teammate, you make that big bold letters in your head, like, okay, the spy, like I just saw that, the spy is dead. Okay, the spy is dead. You keep an eye on the, on the scoreboard, and when the spy responds, you say, okay, the spy is alive. The spy is alive. And when the spy shows up behind you, you say, okay, the spy just showed up behind us. The spy is behind us. And what happens is, if you practice that for an entire game, for however long you want to practice it, but if you do it consistently and you make it a focus, you're going to notice that those timings are surprisingly consistent. And it's so cool, because you get used to those timings, and then what happens is, you, you start getting used to it, it becomes subconscious, and then what happens is, you're going to be just kind of standing around, doing nothing, maybe holding a point, 
and you're going to have this thought just out of nowhere, like, oh wait, we haven't seen the spy in a while. And you're going to turn around, and nine times out of ten, I guarantee you, within a few seconds, the spy is going to show up somewhere. And that's game sense. That's what that is. Um, dealing with the spy. And it's an awesome feeling to know that you can do that. Because A, it, you're not even thinking about it. And B, it's, it's consistent for the most part. Now, of course, it's not going to be 100% of the time. But it's still consistent and uh, consistent enough that you can do it without thinking, and it just becomes part of your playstyle. It becomes part of you playing as a heavy, and it makes you a better heavy, just like that. You don't have to think about it. It's awesome. So, for example, saw. I'm going to talk about what I just saw. I saw the spy scout in the window behind. I turned away because I didn't want to watch him because I knew what he was going to do. He's going to go back around, and I turned around right as the spy was coming out of main. That was intentional, that wasn't by accident. It was because I just knew the timings of the spy, I knew the timings of the map, and I, and I turned around right as he was about to stab the medic. Thankfully he didn't, and for some reason our medic didn't turn around when I called it, but that could have been my fault. <laughs> I may not have been clear. But, the point is that those timings are consistent, they're important, and they're damn fun when you hit the nail on the head. And one last point I wanted to make is that all of these things with the Spy, the Sniper, and the Scout, there's six other classes in the game that you have to figure out how to work with. They all have their individual stuff and kinks and all that. This all falls under the umbrella of game sense. And the more you practice this kind of stuff, and you can practice it in your own way, the bit, you know, you just practice it by playing the game for the most part, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And it all becomes second nature to you. You don't have to think about the game sense you get good at it, and it just becomes you as a heavy, or as whatever class. I assume you're a heavy if you're watching this video. And it's so cool. I keep saying that. It is so cool when that happens, to know you can do that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's all I got for today. I really hope you guys got something out of this video. Um, I'm trying to make these videos where I just turn on the camera and I kind of ramble and just talk nonsense for like 10-15 minutes. I'm trying to make those kinds of videos better because I enjoy making them, just think, talking about what's on my mind. Uh, so I really hope it was useful. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, leave me a comment if you've got questions or if you want to bring something up. I'm happy to, uh, to talk about stuff, discuss things. Um, I know uh, given these types of videos I've made in the past, uh, <laughs> I tend to make a lot of mistakes, and then those videos get 3,000 views, and then, yeah, so I don't want that to happen again. So please correct me if I made a mistake, or bring something up if you want to bring something up. Again, I hope you guys got something out of it, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.